all here tonight. I'm so pleased that you could join us for the bicentennial kickoff for Chautauqua County. I think we should all be uh, grateful that we didn't have to arrive here in a horse and buggy like our predecessors would have had to 200 years ago. Um, we've got some wonderful events planned throughout 2011 and we're going to have lots of opportunities to highlight our wonderful history and the, the many people who have uh, touched on the county's history. But to start the program tonight, I'd like to ask you all to rise now that I've just asked you to get seated so that we can have the presentation of the 1811 flag, which is the Star Spangled Banner. We have a wonderful group of reenactors who are bringing the flag to us this evening. And when they come forward, we'll do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to ask... Reverend Ronald Lemon to come forward and say a prayer for us. Shall we pray? Lord, this is a great occasion that you allow us to celebrate 200 years. We thank you for all of your blessings upon this county. We ask that you would just continue to show us your favor. Thank you for all of the people in the past who have made uh, great progress for us and have set good examples. Now, Lord, as we celebrate tonight, would you oversee all of our activities, show your favor to us, and, Lord, we look forward to 200 more years of your blessing and your favor. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our county executive, Greg Edwards. Thank you very much, Michelle. And I think we ought to begin by a round of applause for Michelle and her team who have worked so hard. I know we've all been there in the past, and when something comes together, it comes together so well, it's easy to forget some of the, the trials and tribulations and effort that goes into making it possible. Michelle's worked tirelessly uh, with a great team of folks to uh, bring us here uh, this evening. It is my pleasure to uh, serve as your current county executive. And we're having a chance this evening to look back a little bit over those uh, of my predecessor and our predecessors who have uh, uh, laid the foundation for us to be here this evening. But uh, to begin with, I do have an opportunity. I want to recognize some folks uh, that are here. I would like to begin with uh, Having been in Albany uh, uh, today, uh, Kathy Young is there working hard on our behalf, as she does every day. Uh, whether she's here in the district or he, she is in uh, Albany, she sends her regards and her regrets. Uh, believe me, uh, she would prefer to be here tonight with us, uh, celebrating this, uh, but uh, she's doing a, an incredibly difficult job in a wonderful way, as she always does as our senator. We do have the pleasure, however, to have our, uh, our new assemblyman, uh, who also will be recognized for another role he had uh, in representing us uh, before too long. I, I would like to welcome our assemblyman, Andrew Goodell, and ask him to come up because I believe he has something from the assembly. Good evening. It's great to be here with you. I have to tell you, the more I go to Albany, 
the more I love Chautauqua County. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, you get to see almost uh, half the state, a little bit more actually, driving to and from every week. And every time I start approaching Chautauqua County, two things come to mind. First, I'm about to enter the best county of New York State. And second, why is it always snowing here? <laughs> but I'm so glad to be here. Uh, Assemblyman Joe Giglio, as you know, represents a portion of our county. And together, he and I uh, introduced a resolution in front of the New York State Assembly. He is in New York City now on the Medicaid redesign team, which is a very important function for our state and sends his best regards to all of you. And uh, I'm, I'm pleased to uh, present a legislative resolution. This was actually adopted by unanimous vote and the floor of the assembly, uh, commemorating Chautauqua County on its 200th birthday. And uh, it goes on extensively. It starts out in 1811 and highlights each year thereafter. <laughs> but I'm just going to skip the best parts. <laughs> and, um, uh, just a couple of them. Whereas uh, Chautauqua County had the first community co college in New York State, the first natural gas well in the United States, the first Grange in the world in Ellery Center, Grange number one. Fredonia. I'm sorry, Fredonia. We've got one in downtown Ellery Center. <laughs> The oldest lighthouse on the Great Lakes, the first lighthouse ever to be lit by natural gas. And where Chautauqua County has been the home to many prominent New York State and United States citizens, has outstanding four season recreational opportunities and hosts some of the most beautiful land in the state and some of the best people. Resolved that this legislative body pause in its deliberations Commend Chautauqua County upon the occasion of celebrating its bicentennial on February 9, 2011. And it's resolved that the copy of this resolution, suitably engrossed, be transmitted to Chautauqua County. And, and uh, it is my great honor to present this resolution to Chautauqua County. I look forward to another 200 years of success and record setting in Chautauqua County. And I look forward to being there, and I hope to see all of you there, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Silverman. I do appreciate uh, the efforts that you have been uh, putting forth on our behalf already and your willingness to be here with us uh, this evening. And there's many others that we'll get to okay. in just a moment. We'll have an opportunity to recognize them as, as a group. But I would like to have uh, Sandy Sopek, our county clerk, and a person who has had an intimate role and a very important role bringing this all together come up. And she has some remarks that she'd like to make as well. I am just so pleased with this crowd that we have. You are awesome people. Congratulations for showing up tonight, and we love all of you for supporting us. It's been just something that we've taken a great pride in getting this organized, and I've tried to assist Michelle as much as I possibly can. She is an incredible person and a hard worker, and I will do anything to help her out. And this turnout really consummates the whole thing and brings it all together. So thank you so much. I have a couple of proclamations to read. One from our governor. And, uh, I am happy to share his remarks with you this evening. <clears throat> State of New York Executive Chamber. Whereas we all recognize the value and importance of preserving the rich history and heritage of our great state and nation. The citizens of New York welcome the opportunity to respectfully acknowledge the bicentennial anniversary of the founding of Chautauqua County. And whereas situated in the farthest southwestern corner of New York State, bordered by Erie County on the northeast, Cattaraugus County on the east, Pennsylvania to the south, and Lake Erie to the west, 
Chautauqua County was created by the partition of Genesee County in 1808, but was not organized and functioning separately until February 9, 1811. The name of the county originally spelled C-H-A-U-T-A-U-Q-U-E, was a contraction of a Native American expression, but the meaning is uncertain. And whereas there are events and experiences unique to each county, city, town, and village that are significant to the birth and development of our beloved United States of America. And much of this magnificent region was instrumental in the westward movement of homesteaders as transportation was more accessible down the Portage Trail, connecting Chautauqua Lake with Lake Erie. Those who chose to settle here found excellent, rich farmlands amid the beautiful lakes of the region. And today, Chautauqua County has a remarkable number of farms as successful wineries growing thousands of acres of grapes nestled along the low elevation land near Lake Erie. And whereas the true greatness of a community comes from the heart and soul of the people who live there. The residents of Chautauqua County can be remarkably proud of the region's impressive cultural, educational, recreational, social, and historical offerings and attractions, particularly the world-famous Chautauqua Institute with its renowned summer-long sessions of learning and those with the good fortune to visit this gracious area know they too have discovered a very special and charming place. And whereas Chautauqua County is home to distinguished and accomplished individuals, it is these extraordinary people who have defined this geography over the last two centuries and truly deserve to be commended for their steadfast commitment towards sustaining and honoring their past while contributing, contributing in meaningful ways that impact the present and shape the future. Now therefore I, Andrew M. Cuomo, Governor of the State of New York, do hereby cite the bicentennial anniversary of the County of Chautauqua, and on behalf of all New Yorkers, congratulate all its wonderful citizens with best wishes for a memorable celebration of this significant milestone. What a wonderful thing for him just taking off and so forth to send us such a wonderful speech. I congratulate him. And then Catherine Young was not able to make it tonight. She is in Albany, as you know, Greg, and so forth. And she's busy and couldn't make it. But she will be down. And we'll all be looking forward to her visit, as we always do. But uh, she did send something uh, preliminarily for us to uh, know how she is feeling about this and hoping that we all have a great time tonight celebrating this. Commemorating the 200th anniversary of Chautauqua County, New York. Whereas it is the intent of this legislative body to honor and commemorate the proud and distinguished histories of the people and communities which comprise the noble body of this great empire state. And whereas it is the purpose of this legislative body to now co commemorate the 200th anniversary of Chautauqua County, New York, to be celebrated throughout the calendar year of 2011. In the many cities, towns, and villages that combine to form the county's identity. And whereas this bicentennial celebration is important to the residents of Chautauqua County because it provides historical, cultural, and artistic opportunities and activities as well as instills a sense of pride in the communities and county as a whole. And whereas Chautauqua County was first settled in the late 18th century, 
and the county limits were defined in an act of 1808. The county was required to function as a part of Niagara County until it attained a population of 500 taxable land-owning residents. Chautauqua County was officially recognized as an independent county by the New York State Legislature of February 9, 1811. Imagine that. And whereas the Western Gateway to the State of New York, Chautauqua County, covers 1,065 square miles containing two cities, 27 towns, and 13 villages. The county has a 50-mile shoreline on Lake Erie and holds six lakes. Chautauqua County was named for its largest lake, which is 20 miles long and 1,308 miles above sea level. Whereas rich in natural resources, Chautauqua County holds over 1,500 commercial farms, more than 15,000 square acres of grapes, and 20 wineries. The French Creek watershed in Chautauqua County is the most biologically diverse riverine system in the Northeast United States and is home to 12 globally rare species and whereas many famous people have called Chautauqua County home including New York State Governors William H. Seward and Reuben Fenton, naturalist Roger Torrey Peterson, Supreme Court Justice and Chief United States Prosecutor at the Nuremberg Trials Robert H. Jackson, entrepreneurs B.F. Goodrich and George Pullman, musician Natalie Merchant, beloved actress Lucille Ball, and numerous other writers, athletes, artists, military heroes, and politicians. And whereas Chautauqua County has long been known as a place of academic opportunity with Jamestown Business College, the State University of New York at Fredonia, and Jamestown Community College, the first community college in New York State. And whereas educational and cultural offerings abound in Chautauqua County, through the Chautauqua Institution, which hosts 142,000 participants in its programs each summer. The Roger Torrey Peterson Institute a National Center for Nature Education, the Lilydale Assembly, the World Center of the Universal Religion of Modern Spiritualism. And whereas Chautauqua County is credited with a number of firsts, the first Grange in the world and the first Women's Christian Temperance Union were both formed in Fredonia. The oldest lighthouse on the Great Lakes and the first to be lighted by natural gas still stands at Barcelona Harbor. And the first naval skirmish of the War of 1812 was fought at the mouth of the Canada Way Creek. And whereas remaining fruitful over the ebb and flow of decades of growth and change, Chautauqua County continues its commitment to enhancing the quality of life of its citizens, ensuring a positive business institutional and educational climate and providing all essential services and whereas it is appropriate to not only celebrate the county's origins and history this year but also to set the right tone and objectives for the next 200 years of Chautauqua County's history and whereas it is the intent of this legislative body to publicly recognize and honor milestones in the history of communities large and small in this great empire state. Now therefore be it resolved that this legislative body pause in its deliberations to commemorate the 200th anniversary of Chautauqua County and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution suitably engrossed be transmitted to Chautauqua County, New York, adopted and sent, submitted by Catherine M. Young, 
New York State Senate, 57th Senate District. Yes. Thank you very much, Sandy, for uh, bringing those remarks and uh, giving us an opportunity to really condense our history into some of our more, more notable uh, points. But I'll ask, uh, uh, ask Michelle if she'll come up here for just a moment, because we are going to have an opportunity, and she will sure help me uh, go through this. I would like an opportunity for us to recognize those who share the privilege that I currently have in being county executive, who really have laid the foundation and the, the benchmark, in many cases, for what it's like and what the opportunities are as county executives. So for just a moment, I'll give you an idea of who came uh, before me in this particular role. The first uh, was Hallark Clothier, and um, he was chairman of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, Richard Evans uh, was chairman of the Board of Supervisors, and uh, Hall Clothier was for 15 years, 1948 to 1962. Uh, Richard Evans served from 1962 to 1971. And uh, we have Honorable Joseph Gerasi with us this evening. So, Your Honor, if you come up here, please. Uh, we, have the, we have the unique distinction of recognizing uh, Judge Gerasi because he served as chairman of the Board of Supervisors from 1972 to 1974. And then effective January 1975, this county began operating under a new charter. And the newly created position of Chautauqua County was filled. And you are first elected county executive in Chautauqua County. You served from 1975 until May of 1983, when you resigned this position to take the position uh, with the State Department of Agriculture and Markets as their commissioner. And I want to thank you for that. And you'll say there's some others who are going to join you up here as well. Uh, it, to fill Judge Rossi's place in the balance of his term, David Dawson was appointed as interim executive until a special election was held uh, to elect a new county executive. And he could not be here with us this evening. At that special election in, in 1983, John Glenson became the county executive, and he served from 1983 through 1989. So, Jack, if you would please, also. I know you, I saw you earlier on. If you come on up here, Jack. Following Jack in this role is a gentleman we just we uh, heard from just moments ago, Andrew Goodell. Andrew was elected as county executive and served from 1990 through 1997. So, Andrew, if you come back up here, please. Following, following Andrew in this role is Mark Thomas. I know Mark is here. We had a chance to speak just a moment ago. And he began his term in 1998 and served through 2005. And like Andrew, who's currently serving as our assemblyman, uh, Mark Thomas is leading the way as the Western New York Parks Director for the New York State Parks Association. And I'm pleased to have his leadership there as well. Mark, congratulations. Good to see you. I've had the pleasure of joining these gentlemen in this role. And it is a distinct pleasure and honor to do that and uh, you can see that some bright, talented people really blazed a trail that's allowed us to go forward successfully. So it's, uh, it's great to have these gentlemen join us, and we have a small uh, recognition for that, a certificate of appreciation. And so I'm going to step aside here and uh, join these gentlemen. And Michelle, you want to uh, join as well? On the other side there, we'll kind of look in these, these gentlemen. You can open up. Yeah, why don't you show them off? <laughs> Thank you very much. Preceding county executives uh, were the chairman of the legislature, and uh, we have uh, a series of these gentlemen that we can recognize this evening. Uh, Frank Bratt served as the legislative chairman from 1975 to 1977. Gordon Anderson served as chairman from 1978 to 1979. And Robert Barber has served. Gentlemen, if you're here, please step forward. Served from 1980 to 1983. I saw Robert here earlier. Uh, from 1984 to 1985, Thomas Hart served as chairman of the legislature. And from 1986 to 1987, Robert Stanley served as chairman. Richard Davies, who I saw here earlier this evening, served as chairman from 19, come on up here, Dick, served as chairman from 1988 to 1989, and again from 1996 to 1997. He did a good job the first time around and did a good job the second time. Obviously, welcome back in that leadership role. Lance Spicer served for three terms, 
from 1990 to 1995. You're welcome, Lance, here as well. Michael Bobsing served from 1998 to 1999. I didn't see if I saw Michael here or not. Jane Fagerstrom served as chairwoman from 2000 to 2001. And Keith Allstrom served as chairman of the legislature from 2002 to 2010. And our current chairman, Fred Crossett, is serving as our, our chairman beginning uh, last year and continues to serve us there today. And, and I think these gentlemen deserve uh, recognition, a round of applause. And applause. And we are going to ask Ron Lemon, who recently stepped out of his role as legislator, to introduce our current serving legislators so that they can be recognized as well because of the service that they have provided and will continue to provide going forward. This will be my first time calling the roll. Keith Allstrom, District 1. Sean Heenan, District 2. Robert Dove, District 3. If you could come up to sign the proclamation, Mr. Dove. We have a proclamation for each of them to sign. So as I call your name, if you're here, if you'd come up and sign the, the uh, sheet. George Barello, District 4. <coughs> Jerry Park, District 5. John Runkle, District 6, could not be here. Robert Stewart, District 7. Tammy Downey, District 8. Larry Barmore, District 9. Alias Mr. Prendergast tonight. Mark Tarbright, District 10. Victoria James, District 11. Lori Cornell, District 12. Paula DeJoy, District 13. Scott Stutzman, District 14. Maria Kinberg, District 15.
Charles Nazaro, District 16. Richard Babbage, District 17. Dr. Rudy Mueller, District 18. J. Gould, District 19. Fred Kroska, District 20. David Himmeline, District 21. <coughs> Doug Richmond, District 22. Thomas DeJoe, District 23. Bob Scudder, District 24, could not be here tonight. John Gulo, District 25. And we do have one for Ron Lemon uh, for your dedication commitment as a previous county legislator and current clerk. Thank you. There you go. Look at these little guys to sign and we'll get a group picture. I have to have the professional line. <laughs> I'm not going to begin to try and do that. So you can warn yourselves. <laughs> That'd be great. I, yeah, I, I think if you could kind of fit this space right here, that'd be great. I've got you guys kind of coming here a little bit. All set? <laughs> if you've had a chance to look at your program tonight, you see that there's a picture inside of a gentleman named Delisle Todd Foote. And we have a special award to give for the very first time named after him. And I'd like to tell you all a little bit about him and about the gentleman who is going to be receiving the very first Eliel Todd Foote Local History Award. I'd like to ask James O'Brien from the Chautauqua County Historical Society to come up and present this with me because it's really being given on behalf of all of us in the historical community who have um, shown their enthusiasm and support for this award. Eliel Todd Foote was an extraordinary man. He was trained as a physician, served as county sheriff, he was a New York State Assemblyman and a county judge. He was an ardent abolitionist, and he was instrumental in establishing Lakeview Cemetery in Jamestown. But I feel that his most important contribution to Chautauqua County was in his role as a historian. His efforts to preserve and document the county's history began in 1820, well before our residents had the luxury of leisure time to document their own histories. As he traveled around the county in his capacity as judge, he recorded the recollections of our pioneers in pocket notebooks. 
Most of what we know today about our first settlers in the first few decades of the county's growth and development is due to Foote's devotion to the subject throughout his lifetime. As we celebrate the county's 200th birthday, we affirm the value of Foote's life work with the creation of this award in his name. It's hard to imagine somebody being able to measure up to Foote's contributions, and yet we have a gentleman amongst us who is definitely measured up to that. Um, his commitment to local history is just phenomenal. And the historical and educational communities just expressed overwhelming support for Dr. Dutch, Doug Shepard to be the first recipient of this award. <laughs> Doug, I know Doug probably doesn't want to come up here while I read all these glowing um, comments about him. He's in the back waving. At some point, you are going to have to come up and get your picture taken. <laughs> um, Doug has given thousands of hours of research time to the heritage of this county. He can tell you about just about any person or building ever mentioned in the Fredonia Censor, which ran for over 150 years. That's amazing. His in-depth knowledge of town records and records held at our local museums makes him the ultimate source when you've exhausted all the other avenues, not for those of us in the county alone, but for people around the globe. The consensus seems to be that Doug never says no to anyone who needs his help. I received testimonials from far and near when we announced to the folks that we deal with that we're going to be giving this award. Um, and everybody said the same thing, that Doug goes above and beyond the call when asked for assistance. He and his wife Winnie were at the epicenter of the effort to save and rehabilitate the Fredonia Opera House. In order to secure grant funds, Doug wrote an exhaustive detail of the physical and cultural history of that building, as well as a vision statement of what was to be done. His efforts resulted in one of the largest historic preservation awards ever given out by the state. His cheerful and loving enthusiasm for local history is contagious. Ann Deacon from SUNY Fredonia wrote about how Doug's sense of humor has engaged and inspired her students. He's shown her students all about service learning, which is a new uh, catchphrase on college campuses these days. Um, he showed them that your devotion for an avocation never ends. And if your lifelong avocation also benefits your community, then all the better. And Doug epitomizes that. He continues to gift our county with his boundless energy and grace, and he unselfishly shares his knowledge and his research and his wonderful sense of humor. He's a true guardian of our heritage, and I'm very pleased to give him this award tonight. for the event you've all been waiting for. It seems as though the, um, public, the publicity that we've received for this event has over overwhelmingly been um, showing their interest in the skit that we're about to see this evening. So I'd like to ask our two actors to, to get ready and, and come forward. Um, I'm going to just give you a little bit of background so you understand what we're going to be um, revealing this evening. When, in 1811, when the county was established, it was comprised of only two very large towns, Chautauqua and Pomfret. At that time, the county was governed by a board of supervisors, which meant that the town supervisors were also responsible for running the county. Therefore, the first government body of our county was comprised of two men, the Honorable Philo Orton from the town of Pomfret, and the Honorable uh, Matthew Prendergast from the town of Chautauqua. 
And just so you know a little bit more about these two men, Philo Orton was born in Massachusetts in 1778. He looks very good for his age, doesn't he? <laughs> he arrived in Chautauqua County in 1806, worked as a surveyor, and became a town supervisor at the young age of 33. He also served as a county judge later in our county history. So we now join the Honorable Matthew Pendergast of Chautauqua and the Honorable Philo Orton of Pomfret as they open their meeting. Well, Mr. Orton, let's begin the meeting, shall we? Mr. Rouse is prepared to take the minutes. I see no reason to stand on any ceremony. I have no doubt that the two of us can get matters arranged in a short period of time, and we can be on our way. Agreed, Mr. Pendergast. May I express my thanks for the hospitality provided by Captain Scott for the use of his establishment? It is very much appreciated, yes, sir. Yes, very much. We appreciate it, Mr. Scott. I propose that the first order of business be a review of the finances for the county since last February. According to the bill submitted, the current financial needs of the county come to $86.87. <laughs> Would you like to look over the records, Mr. Orton? Seems to be a tad bit much here. Let me look. If you please, did the sheriff have no expenses against the county this year? Doesn't look that way. $26.37 for the survey of jail limits. Were we premature having the commissioners complete the survey establishing jail limits when the matter of location for the courthouse and jail is yet to be approved? Perhaps. Um, may I ask if we discuss the other issues affecting this year's expenses before we move to the matter of the courthouse? You may. There seems to be some indication that the British could invade through Upper Canada. We need to be prepared to defend our northern shoreline should anything occur. Many of our men will volunteer for the militia if called, but we need to procure arms from Albany so we can properly outfit our men. Ah, Albany, Albany. A, a good precaution and very reasonable. The closest state arsenal is in Canandaigua. That's a long ways away. We must be ready to have arms forwarded from Albany if our men are called to service. Should there be a call to arms, we must be prepared to outfit 200 men. Yes, at least. I see we have a handsome bounty for wolf scalp. Oh boy. I $5 per scalp. This could become a costly expense to the county. Has the bounty been effective? You know, I think so. You know, wolves are a menace to the area sheep. And it appears that the more wolves we remove, the better it is for encouraging settlers to take land contracts here. A fair trade, wolves for sheep. And over the years, it should prove a bargain with the elimination of all the wolves in the county. Wolves for sheep, hmm. I think the price of the pelts may be a little steep, considering the number of wolves we have in our great wilderness. If it proves too costly for the county, we may wish to petition Albany to exempt Chautauqua from the bounty. I think all other county business is in order here. Can we move to the discussion? Can we move to the discussion of the construction of a courthouse before we bring the town charges to the table? Indeed, Mr. Orton. The Council of Appointment in Albany established Mayville as our county seat. I believe the courthouse and jail building should be on the Portage Road in proximity to the Holland Land Company office. Mr. Peacock has recently constructed a fine stone vault there to secure county land contracts. Now, 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 now. With all due respect, Mr. Prendergast, I should think that the courthouse would be better situated in Canada Way. The larger construction of population, I'm, I'm sorry, the larger concentration of population resides along Lake Erie shoreline, where transportation is much more developed. And it only makes sense to locate the county courthouse in an area of the county where it is most convenient to the majority of people. I beg your pardon, Mr. Orton, but Mayville has its advantage, a more central location to all county residents. It is my opinion that the citizens of the county would be much better served by having the county courthouse located in a place that is reasonably centrally located from all areas of the county. Uh, as the population in the center of the county becomes more settled, uh, this will be convenient for everyone. Our population now stands at 2,400, 
with more settlers arriving daily. Well, now, there you go again. I must take great exception to your proposal, sir. I should be remiss in my position as representative of the people of Pomfret if I were not to insist that the courthouse be in Canada way. With the state of New York requiring yet another tax levy to raise the necessary $1,500 for the structure, it is unreasonable to expect that it would not be built in a location where the majority of its citizens can use it. Your proposal, Mr. Prendergast, would have a majority of citizens traveling long distances for services. The question is not the centrality of the location, sir. The question is locating the courthouse in the most highly populated region. Well, I can appreciate the logic of your position, sir. It remains that locating the courthouse in Mayville is fair and more equitable solution for all the people of the county, not just the population in the north. May I reiterate that Mayville was selected as a county seat by Albany. The Holland Land Office is located here because of that designation. The Portage Road is our most direct route between the Great Lakes and Chautauqua Lake, which is vital to the movement of goods and settlers to the interior of the county. We must acknowledge the wisdom of Albany and build our courthouses in Mayville. Excuse me? Did you say the wisdom of Albany? I, I did. Well, sir, if you insist on holding that position, I must tell you that I shall withhold my vote for the approval of the tax levy necessary to raise the funds for the courthouse construction. I cannot, I cannot, in good conscience, approve of a tax levy from Albany for the courthouse that will prove an inconvenience to a majority of our population. My constituents outnumber yours, and we would prevail should it be brought to a vote. Mm. Well, for my part, sir, if you choose to hold that position, I shall be forced to withhold my vote approving the audit of the accounts for the town of Pomfret. <laughs> you do know this meeting cannot adjourn without the approval of the town charges. It appears we're at an impasse, sir. It appears so. I would have to think that there's only one solution to this dilemma. Yes. You must admit, sir, that since people have been coming to Mayville, as it is, to record land transactions and election results, it makes sense to continue that practice and build the courthouse here. Were you able to see your way clear to vote for the levying of the tax for a courthouse to be built in Mayville, I'm sure I can see my way clear to vote for the approval of your financial records, Mr. Orton. You do drive a hard bargain, sir. <laughs> Probably Dr. Rudy. <laughs> I cannot say that I stand in full agreement with your reasoning, sir, but we are charged with managing the county and I cannot return to Pomfret without the approval of the records. So, with that in mind, I believe I am ready to take the vote, Mr. Prendergast, but I can assure you the issue of relocating the county seat will be brought before this body again in the future. Okay, very well, Mr. Orton. All those in favor of levying $1,500 for construction of the courthouse and jail at Mayville, signify by raising your right hand. <laughs> All those in favor of approving the audited records of the town of Pomfret and Chautauqua, signify by raising your right hand. Very good. Well, I believe that concludes the business at hand to everyone's satisfaction. Well, if not to everyone's delight, Mr. Prendergast, there is, however, uh, something that we can put on the agenda for next month. And what would that be, Mr. Orton? The people are considering whether we should not reduce the size of our body or not. Really? <laughs> you're, you're suggesting that uh, we'd re You're suggesting that we would reduce this body from two members to one? Yes, and I have a fair way to do it. 
Why, why would you want to do this? I mean, do you believe it would save money? Well, of course it would. Well, how much? Uh, at least $25. I don't know. The people of this county are demanding the representation. We'll have to think about that, Mr. Orton. Well, if it comes down to it, I have a fair way of deciding who should lose their position. Okay. Uh, I suggest we do a 50-yard race. Well, Mr. Orton, as you can tell, I have rheumatism and I don't walk very fast, so how about an arm wrestling contest? <laughs> That will be something we can discuss further next month. I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Second, all in favor? Meeting adjourned. Mr. Arden, will you start your journey back to Canada Way or will you be staying another night? Well, you know, it is pretty late, travel is hard, and a day's travel is better started early. I'll stay the night, take my leave in the morning. Shall we take supper together? Sounds like a good idea. It'll be my pleasure, Mr. Orton. I understand they serve great meals in Olive's restaurant. I'm sure the taxpayers will be glad to pick up the tab. <laughs> After you, Mr. Orton. Thank you, sir. Well, I think that uh, our actors did a great job and uh, certainly are deserving of another round of applause for their work this evening. What I, what I know is not an act is that uh, both those gentlemen delight in the service that they provide to the people of Chautauqua County as the other uh, legislators do and so it was great to see them to be able to have the opportunity to uh, display that to, uh, this for us this evening. We do have some announcements that uh, Michelle would like to make and then we have the part that I've also been waiting for and that's uh, cutting and eating some cake. So you a couple announcements. I have to say, if I was a Hollywood script writer, I might have to accuse these two gentlemen of taking artistic license with the script they were provided with. But we, <laughs> I think it made it much more entertaining, so uh, they did a wonderful job. Um, but just to tie into the fact that the first county budget was $86.87, um, we are working to raise money for our bicentennial activities that will happen throughout this year. And we thought that we might ask those of you here tonight, if you were interested in making a donation to the bicentennial fund, of $86.87, we have a special commemorative item that will be available for you to commemorate that very significant dollar amount. So um, there are some, um, there's information about it on the back tables. We also have our passports to history for sale. The folks from the Stowe Ferry Bicentennial Group are here and we all want to support the ferry this year and try to keep that thing going. Um, and we have some lapel pins that are also um, being sold for fundraising. So I appreciate you coming. Um, there's plenty of food out back to enjoy, so please stay for a while and visit with us. Thank you. We have uh, a couple of ladies with us here this evening that I would like to ask to uh, uh, do us the honor of cutting the cake. We have Helen Pearson with us uh, this evening. And she has had a significant role in uh, memorializing our history and, and carrying these thoughts forward. So Helen, would you do us the pleasure of being one of the folks to uh, cut the cake as well? And I believe I saw my friend Halcyon here as well. Unless she, uh, she's, too, Halcyon, where are you? She was taking pictures right there. Would you like to join us as well? In helping us cut this cake and then we can get it uh, ready for service. And so ladies, would you like to step over to the cake and get some photos? and get the, uh, the cake cut and we can all enjoy in that. to come over so we'll get some pictures. Yeah. Very good, ladies. Go ahead. Cut the first piece, a big piece, so you guys can share it. There you go. Very good. Thank you, ladies. Thank Appreciate you. it very much.